You know, every time you're off social media for, I was about to say an extended period of time, even a small period of time, people think you've been thrown off. They wonder what's going on. And then we have to say, no, he's actually <clears throat> sick. He's spending time in front of his computer. He doesn't do it on a smartphone. Well, and that's, you know, and I wish I did less of it because a couple times a day I, I have been coming up here and, and just checking Twitter and we had to retweet the stuff on the YouTube channel. Thank you to all the new subscribers. We retweet those notices and so I'd handle some business and I would scan through Twitter and retweet some things or rep respond to a few people. And over the past, like I said, five or six days, that's all I've done. And I knew we were going to be able to do the show today. So I, this morning, before we're going to record, I, you know, get on Twitter and see what's going on. And, and that's why I want to make a public apology at the top of the program. People say that I never apologize and I never admit that I'm wrong. Well, here is a public apology. I'm going to admit that I was wrong. I apologize to all the people that have heard me over the past, I don't know how many years, defending our old friend Uncle Dave Meltzer as somebody who really knows his wrestling and knows what he's talking about. I apologize because he, like a lot of other people that I've known in this business over the last 10 years or so, has embarrassed me for saying that. Because I get on Twitter and the first thing I see this morning is Dave Meltzer has tweeted to somebody, and I don't, you know, once again, I don't know how the goddamn, I'm not going to follow the whole train of conversation. I saw what I needed to see. Meltzer has tweeted, Kenny Omega is a genius at putting a match together. His psychology is so far above, uh, you know, other people that if, if you don't get it, whoever he's replying to, if you don't get it, then it maybe it's just that you're out of touch or whatever the fuck. And my head has felt like it was going to blow up for six days, but it finally did. I, I then see at another tweet almost at the same time that he has said that, well, Okada and Omega, that series has blown away uh the what flair and steamboat drew which core you have you know for 30 and 40 years after the fact and adjusting for inflation and the fact that flair and steamboat uh worked every night in the carolinas for one series and for another series they were hampered by fucking wcw and all the other things blah 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 but he's not only outdrawn but those matches exceeded uh, basically omega and okada drew better and were better in ring with better psychology. This was a quote with better psychology than flair and steamboat. And at that point I had to just tell Dave, fuck you, Dave. And that's what I'm saying now. Fuck you, Dave, because we have known each other for 35 years and I have defended you yeah, and I will still say, I'm not, I've always said, even though Shawn Michaels was a fucking flaming fucking asshole to me constantly and everybody else practically in his life because he was a pill head and et cetera, et cetera. At the same time, he was the best performer in the ring of the era. <clears throat> so I can give credit where credit is due. Dave Meltzer knows more about wrestling history than almost anybody. There's some historians that probably know about more about history, but they're not as good on modern day. Dave has written so much worked with so much of these historians. He knows his historical facts, gates, figures, trends, whatever. He's seen a ton of wrestling. He's watched more wrestling than anybody alive, especially from the territory days. <clears throat> he, uh, uh, when he reports these business facts, he is not making shit up or exaggerating shit or whatever. I'm not defending Bruce Pritchard. Because Bruce was lying, just flat out lying, because Bruce does that. He flat out lies and bullshits people. Um, for whatever reason, I don't know. He was talking to Dave and those things. Dave, if, if believe Dave Meltzer over Bruce Pritchard about what was going on in the WWF in the 90s. I don't want to start any false rumors. I don't know why Bruce bullshits people that he doesn't have to bullshit. He can't, remember, Brian, he came to me. That's why I don't speak to him anymore. He came to me with bullshit that I wasn't soliciting. And fed me the bullshit for, what was it, nine months? And then when I finally said, fuck you, you've been bullshitting me, then he was astounded and astonished 
or why I was upset. But anyway, I'm not saying any of that about Dave Meltzer. What I am saying it is that he's lost his ever-loving fucking mind. One of, of a couple of things is happening. Either he is senile or what, and we've joked weed's legal in California, but weed doesn't make you that stupid. He, he's he's senile, which I don't think, because you couldn't produce the volume of work he produces being senile, so we could eliminate that. <clears throat> or he's like the Republicans, and he thinks that if he comes out and tells the truth that he will lose a significant portion of, in this case, subscribers rather than voters, because he will say that these guys like the Bucks and Olivier and all the rest of these outlaw fucks that are not ready for prime time are bilking this fucking rich money mark who had a fucking play federation when he was a teenager and just had, happens to have a father with $17 billion. And they rush this thing into fucking fruition without a goddamn cohesive plan of, of fucking leader or quality talent. <clears throat> um... He could go ahead and say that, but then he'll lose a bunch of his subscribers, so he's like the Republicans. He chooses to lie and tell everybody the emperor's fully dressed. Or he has just desperately wanted to be a part of this for so long and felt so bad because he's been knocked and fucking reviled by so many people in the business and never actually was in it that now that these guys have sucked up to him and he is swinging off their fucking jock, and they are patting him on the back and inviting him to Mama Buck's Sunday dinners or whatever the fuck is going on. Maybe Omega's fixing him up with some of the fucking Japanese schoolgirls, although I don't think that's the case. I don't think Dave's that kind of guy. Why he can't just... T he told the truth about the junkyard dog who was more over in his place and time and a fucking greater personality in pro wrestling than this goddamn sissy ass prissy pants and finger pointing Harpo Marx looking cartoon fucking wrestling joke ever has been or ever will be. But he used to call him the junk food dog. He used to call. I guess I shouldn't use that expression right after talking about JYD. He used to say something was what it was, even if it was successful or drew money. But now he doesn't. He makes excuses for it. Well, in the demographics say, Dave, I'm talking to you right now. When you tell me that Kenny Omega, that fucking idiot that wrestled a goddamn sex doll in front of people, that fucking has matches with nine-year-old girls, that thinks this goddamn Japanese anime schoolgirl fetish bullshit, you know they have Japanese porn where the girls are fucking octopuses? So that explains to me why Kenny Omega may have been over in Japan for whatever kind of cult audience they have for fucking Harpo Marx lookalikes. Like a goddamn mime with a decent physique. You can't tell me, looking at him, looking at what he does, looking at the joke that they make out of their entire business, that this guy's on a level with Ricky, Fla Ricky Steamboat and Ric Flair that this guy, that I'll tell you exactly, and I've said this before, and I don't give a fuck if anybody don't like it or not. Kenny Omega, for what he did in the fucking ring in Japan, somebody should have broke one or both of his fucking legs and run him off. I can't believe he continued to get booked in the business. They didn't book Eddie Mansfield again, and what Omega's done is worse than Eddie Mansfield. Eddie Mansfield at least didn't make the goddamn business look like a Saturday Night Live sketch. He just exposed it. Omega exposes it as a fucking farce and a complete bunch of shit and encourages all the fans to fucking laugh at it. Just like those two little goddamn schoolboys that are frustrated because they can't... Can you imagine? <clears throat> Can you imagine? Putting the goddamn young bucks in the ring with the Steiner brothers or the Road Warriors or Doom or fucking whatever and say, oh, just go 15 minutes or so. They're over. What the fuck? It's become a goddamn bunch of sissy fucking cosplay assholes having a bunch of goddamn group jack off sessions in front of the fucking fans. That's what they've turned the business into. And Dave Meltzer.
you're defending this. And now you can defend Cody all you want to because he knows what's going on. He saw the lay of the land. He said, this fucking money mark is going to start a promotion and I can be the top fucking baby face on TNT television and I can be bigger than my dad was because I got no competition in this field of nitwits and I know what I'm doing. So I don't blame him. And that's exactly what's happening. And I don't blame Chris Jericho for taking millions of dollars to work part-time and saying, I could be the top heel on my goddamn own fucking television show on TNT. And goddamn more people will hear my music. And I'll be a huge fucking star off of this because everybody around me is a complete fucking moron. So I don't blame him. I don't blame the guys that are on the card that are being booked just because they happen to be high school friends or locker room buddies with the young bucks on their goddamn goddamn outlaw mud show across America fucking tour that they've taken over the past few years is is selling their fucking merchandise to all the goddamn people that think that their shit's funny because wrestling's supposed to be funny and silly and for everybody. I don't blame the guys on the card, but they're not ready to be on national television. They have not been trained properly. They've been plucked straight off of indies without a training program like NXT or OVW or any decent fucking school to prepare you to how to do this professionally. I don't blame them because they're taking the fucking idiots money too. Who I blame for a fucking wasted opportunity on national television at a wrestling promotion where the business could actually be taken seriously And some badass, talented athletes could get together with some entertaining personalities like the MJFs of the world and fucking do a goddamn program that wrestling fans could be proud of that could compete with Vince and everybody could make some money. But not when you're picking on the basis of either nepotism or insanity, your talent roster and you've got a bunch of fucking outlaw-minded goofs that think wrestling is supposed to be a joke as your executive vice presidents booking your women's division and your tag team division. And it, it's, it's goddamn insane. And at the root of it is Tony Khan was a reader of the Wrestling Observer. And suddenly, because he had the resources, decides he's going to start a wrestling promotion and kick Vince McMahon's ass, and he picks these people to fucking advise him and be his stars, which is why I knew it was doomed from the start and why I I wouldn't return Tony Khan's calls after every time I'd see that fucking number pop up on the phone. I'd be like, this is going to take forever, and this guy's going to learn nothing. Because of the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega and their Pissy fucking phony comedy wrestling. And now Dave Meltzer, a guy I've known for 35 years and who I have defended and told people Dave has been a wrestling fan and knows what the fuck. He's so scared of being seen as an old man or out of touch that he is defending this shit. And he's trying to come up with reasons why it's good. Look at Kenny Omega and tell me that that's Stone Cold Steve Austin. But here's something for you. They had, you know, they had an intergender tag team match on the last AEW show, Brian. Kenny Omega and Rio against a guy and a girl. I think it was, it was, is it the tampon girl? I keep. No, no, Kip and Penelope. Oh, uh, a super, super bad and super slut or whatever the fuck. They're all the same. They all, they're, they come from the fucking group of the dick grabbing guy. This is a whole clown show. It's infested everything. It's the coronavirus of pro wrestling. There's nowhere that these fucking Saturday Night Live fucks don't fucking spread. They don't come from the, because of these guys and and they're little California. If you, here's the thing, if you're a wrestler in California and you don't grab the fucking, you know, uh, brown and serve roll covered in pubic hairs, fucking junk and fling yourself across the ring, you can't get booked. So to me, that's a form of sexual harassment. Somebody ought to talk to you. Go to a labor board out in California. And say, hey, I'm a professional wrestler, but I can only go so far in this state unless I grab this guy's dick and then fling my own self across the ring. Maybe that's a complaint. But anyway, they get them from there and they wrestle in bars and they shove tampons in each other's mouths and they book the invisible man. And then there's another on the other coast. There's a Mark promotion 
that wants to change the game or something that fucking pays for all everybody to go to Japan so they can say they wrestled in Japan. Like that's an honor anymore when the people are running their own vanity shows over there to go puncture themselves and slice themselves up on in garbage death matches and catch who knows what kind of fucking diseases from each other and then come back here and say, I just had a death match in Japan, you fucking morons. They get this talent from all these places and the whole fucking, oh, and let's not forget, um, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but Sonny Kiss, I was labeled homophobic because I said the first time I saw him, who is this fucking guy dressed up like a drag queen in the Tropicana bumping his ass into people's faces and suddenly I'm homophobic? Well, fuck you too, because it's all clown show fucking wrestling. And that is what the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega have brought to the United States to national television on the dime of a fucking money mark whose father is so rich he can do whatever the fuck he wants and he suddenly decided he was going to kick Vince McMahon's ass. And the wrestling business, just like the United States, is going to have to suffer for the next 20 years from the Trump administration, a bunch of people who didn't know how this shit was supposed to work and had never done it before at a high level, the wrestling business for the next generation in America, people are going to see that. Well, that's what wrestling's supposed to be, a fucking clown show with a bunch of guys assing off and making fun of their own business on television. Because of Tony Khan being Khan, fiduciary irresponsibility on the part of his advisors. And Dave Meltzer cannot just come out and say, what the fuck are they doing? They're trying to do something on national television and they're doing a glorified indie show with nobody in charge, obviously, because it looks like it was goddamn this show was booked by a fucking schizophrenic. So Dave, I'm sorry that I had to say fuck you on Twitter this morning, but fuck you, Omega and Genius in the same sentence, I will go down, I will die on that hill every day. Fuck you on that. Ric Flair and Riggy Steamboat equals Olivier, and, and Okada's a fine athlete. And everybody's now seeing that he was the one leading those matches, I think. But seriously, Get out of their ass. You're old. You can retire. You've got enough money. You're just like me. You don't have to suck up to anybody anymore. But you're still doing it. What for? You know better than this, unless you've lost your fucking rabbit ass mind. <sighs> and, you know, and you know what somebody else tweeted, Brian, this morning? Well, wrestling's always been silly and fake. Look, guys used to wrestle bears. It was a real fucking bear, you stupid idiots. I've seen that shit. I didn't want to wrestle that bear. Nobody wanted to wrestle that bear. Tracy Smothers wrestled three of them. One of them almost killed him. There wasn't anything fake or funny about that. The people laughed, but the guy wrestling the fucking bear wasn't laughing. That's the same thing as Kenny Omega on national television making funny faces and struggling to bench press 17 pounds for whatever reason that was never explained when he was trying to talk about a serious match and the, the inner gender matches. Can you see stone cold Steve Austin taking bumps for ivory? What about if Ric Flair teamed up with Misty blue Sims, the fucking supposed best bout machine, which say that at the mall in fucking Des Moines, and somebody's going, what, what the fuck? That's a Japanese goddamn phrase. <laughs> Say that on the, at the mall in Des Moines and people, best bout machine. What the fuck are you on about, right? The supposed greatest wrestler in the world is teaming up with a 98-pound schoolgirl to wrestle mid-level talent and another girl and being competitive with the, with the girls. And in his, it, 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 you remember that that big angle that happened between the fabulous Moolah and Harley Race, right? <laughs> you fucking moron! You, I, the thought of Olivier in the wrestling business detests me. As I said, they never booked Mansfield, and what he's done's worse. I think he should have had his legs broken, and he should have been run off. 
that's just me and everybody else. Of the, the thing that I get upset about, I think the most, besides, like I said, I don't blame the, the, uh, the guys on the card. I, I blame the people making this actually happen. Everybody, the veterans that take the dick flip or the veterans that go along with the fucking invisible man or whatever the case it is that they do. Well, then, because then the fans of this shit will say, well, so-and-so did it. <clears throat> there are different varieties of veterans in the wrestling business. Some took the business very seriously. As I said, you wouldn't see Scott Steiner would not be working uh, in a, on a competitive basis with Matt and Nick Jackson in the eighties because he would have known in the nineties, he would have known it would have buried him. The fans would have thought he was fake and silly. It would, he wouldn't have, he would have cost him money at that time because people had since then. But now I'm not saying Scott Steiner would work, do these things, but I'm just saying as an example, None of the veterans of those days at that time, because they would have known they would have been sacrificing their money and their image and their, their fucking over or their heat or whatever. They wouldn't have gone along with that shit then, but now they're out of the business. They're just doing it part-time. They don't give a fuck because they're like, well, it's already fucked anyway. They don't take it as seriously as I do. So they go, okay, just pay me. I'll do whatever. That's, that's one group. There's another group that feel like I do that turn their nose up at that shit and say, you're fucking ridiculous. And that's why they're not involved in it. And I, you know, it just depends on what type of personality you are, but I, I, I lose respect for the veterans that I E take the dick flip or go along with the foolishness or whatever, because fuck, and you don't even need the money anymore. Most of you, it, it or that amount of money, you know, some fucking garage show or whatever. I just, I don't know. I don't know when somebody would have come up with enough money ever in my career to make me work with the invisible man in front of people. I don't know how that would have happened, whether I was active or not, and whether I was making a lot of money at the time or not. But maybe that's just me. I just have a little pride in what I did. Shame it's so in such short supply. <clears throat> but... Uh, <sighs> But once again, here we are. This is why I'm over here not participating in this shit because I have some principles and also some money and I don't have to. But goddamn, don't act like it's okay. I'll work with you if you, if you come out and you say, look, I need the fucking money or look, I know this is bullshit, but who cares anymore? Because I don't, I've, I'm in another business. I just do this on the weekends. What, just be honest. Don't say, oh, it's great to work with these young guys and whatever the fuck and do this. No, it's not. You know it's bullshit. You know it's fucking bullshit, Dave, and you know it's fucking bullshit veterans. So don't try to fucking sugarcoat it. You never would have done it when you were really in the business, and you don't want to be doing it now, except you just don't give a shit because you think the whole thing's a joke anymore anyway. Well, I'm not going to contribute to the sodomizing of the corpse of professional wrestling, and I'm not going to act like, oh, well, I guess it's evolved. It's all good now. No, it's stupid. And this is why our generation is now, this generation is now fucked. For the next 10, 15, 20 years, another big national thing will never be tried again. Because this will only go so far as it already is. The people who like that kind of thing, that's the kind of thing they're going to like. It's not going to catch on in mass numbers and get hot enough, go, oh, gosh, blah, 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 whatever the fuck. And then what it's going to do is it's going to create the idea in everybody's heads, yeah, wrestling is even stupider than it used to be, and it's supposed to be silly. This is, <clears throat> do we call it performance fighting? Do we call it athletic gymnastics? Do we call it, I don't know what you call it. I, you know, dramatic athletics, except too much of it is fucking silly to have drama in the fucking title. So if you're going to go along with it, admit you're going along with it. Say, well, this is all fucking stupid and I don't give a shit anymore, but they're paying me if, if you're in that position. Or say, well, yeah, for the kind of people that like that kind of thing, that's the kind of thing these people like, and it's drawn a set amount of an audience or whatever. Don't act like this is some revolutionary bullshit that's taken everything into the fucking 21st century and it's going to be fucking big and great. 
I used to be on a show every Saturday night that was watched by more people than Raw and SmackDown and AEW put to fucking gather. And that's when half the people in this country had cable. So I'm not impressed by any of you and your fucking numbers and your bullshit. Show me that you're serious about the wrestling business and about being a serious performer and getting over and doing what this is supposed to be before everybody lost the plot, and I will compliment you, and I will be on your side. And go out there and do stupid, silly bullshit, because it's all supposed to be a hoot anyway, and who gives a fuck, and I'm going to tell you to fuck off. So have we got that cleared up, you think?